Well, uh, Bob, it's not uncommon uh, for me to say that you have had a huge impact in my life. And it is, uh, it's true not only through writing the book, but just afterwards and reading your books. Bob Goff uh, is hanging out with us today. He's a lawyer, speaker, author of the New York Times bestselling books, Love Does and Everybody Always. Uh, you also right now are working with your foundation, which is Love Does, uh, which is formerly Restore International. Uh, you've written Love Does, Everybody Always, Live in Grace, and Dream Big. Uh, Bob, thank you for hanging out with Jess and I tonight. Oh, this is just so great. It's so good. I have the benefit of seeing you guys if people are just listening and I just uh, seeing your smiles. I'm just uh, thinking of two people becoming one person like that <laughs> two becoming one. Uh, I thought when we got married, uh, Maria Goff thought when the two becoming one meant I would become her. <laughs> well, that's my expectation too. Is that I know. I'm like, oh, heck no. Um, but, but what we're trying to do is not be a better version of us. We're trying to just be a more accurate ref reflection of the hope that's inside of it. Faith is a big deal for me. I know it isn't for everybody, and it's a big deal for Marie. And so we're just saying, how can we reflect the kind of uh, love that we've received from God to the people around us? Well, it's interesting because you've, like, I mean, throughout your book, especially the, the most recent is, you know, Marie has brought up a lot. And we're just starting to enter into this, right? We're engaged. Uh, we have now on the countdown less than uh, 10 months until we get married. Come on. By the way, we were expecting to get married a couple months ago, but the pandemic has changed things. So we're fine. We're just going to push it back. Um, it just, it feels like your lives are so connected. Like, do you have boundaries in this relationship uh, or is it just everything goes? Yes. Uh, the uh thing that we've done is we've established this kind of a, a rule that we revisit all the time. And it's this, it's a hundred percent kindness and 0% drama. Uh, that's been really helpful to us when we have a, because we're very different people. Uh, Maria is a very shy. She, it's like seeing a unicorn for you to see her. That's why you don't see her now. <laughs> we've been married 34 years. We've gone out to dinner three times. No way. Yeah. About once every decade. Um, and so uh, I, I think we're due. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things about uh, trying to uh, navigate this thing, it's, uh, it's out of John 17, this idea that we would be one, but oneness doesn't mean sameness. And so uh, to realize that I'm not trying to get her to come out of her shell. Uh, she's not trying to get me is like Tigger to chill out. Uh, but can we operate with a lot of kindness and no drama? That's what makes junior high school really difficult because it's a hundred percent drama and no kindness. <laughs> oh, that's true. No, how, how, how would that be kind of for you guys? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, to answer that, we're, we're learning a lot. And, uh, and she just moved out to Denver. We've done long distance um, for over two years of our relationship. Yeah. Uh, and so we're starting to get a rhythm of that. I, I mean, right? Like, yeah, we're like figuring out what it looks like to be in the same place for an entire day, like normal working day. And yeah. not just like a fun weekend where we have all weekend to go and explore, but like when we both have things to get done or when you're kind of just need alone time or whatever. Just a Tuesday. Yeah. Like it would just, yeah. it doesn't that it's fireworks and something fancy. It's just a regular old Tuesday. And how are you guys going to navigate the ordinary days? Because that's where most of those will be. But I think your goal, when you look down, you know, 30 or 40 years into your marriage, you don't want to say that, uh, listen, that guy, Ben, he's the best roommate I ever had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Or like he just really picks up his socks like a boss. <laughs> I hope that what we'll achieve in our relationships, uh, whether they're friendships, uh, fiancés, uh, a marriage, is that we would always be curious about each other. I've got a great thing that I've been doing. I've been writing down questions on three by five cards. And I, now I'm 62. You guys can double your age and you're still around right? You can probably triple your age. You're in need of repair, but 31. you are, 
Yeah. So you're still around at 62. You can't double it. You're in a jar. (laughs) So I'm not bummed about that, but I have this urgency. There's a proverb that talks about to number your days. And so knowing that I only have a little bit of time with sweet Maria, I hope it's decades. Um, But I want to ask these questions. I want to ask 10,000 questions of her and my kids and give 10,000 answers for me between now and then. Wouldn't it be neat to collect 10,000 three by five cards that had a question? I'll give you an example. Like when was the last time you were embarrassed and why and how long did it last for? Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing, Ben, if you could let Jess know, like this is the last time I was embarrassed. It was like this misunderstanding or whatever. What comes to mind for you? I'm just springing this on you. Yeah. um, Well, honestly, uh, maybe the last time is she, uh, her name's Jessica. Uh, I call her Jess. And uh, this is such a small thing, but I remember feeling, I know she doesn't like to be called Jessie. Yeah. It's something she doesn't I love. I can't explain it. Um, and I called her Jessie uh, a couple weeks ago. Actually, we were in Nashville. I remember it. And I felt like I had done something absolutely awful. Like I was embarrassed, like inside of me, like turn. Now, it's such a small thing. I've made tons bigger mistakes, even yeah. in our relationship already. But I remember just being like, you are like, why did you do that? Like, just like very embarrassed. That's, that's the last thing that comes to mind. Really? Yes. Yeah. What do you think? What comes to mind for you? Um, embarrassed. Gosh, there's so many times. Sometimes when there's a target rich environment, it's hard to land. I know. Run. I'm like, what the- do I talk about? Well, today I got lost in the mall on accident and I had to ask directions and the place I was looking for was right in front of me. That was yeah. embarrassing. Beautiful. <laughs> that would be a great example. So to um, be able to communicate to one another, like where you are, like when you mm-hmm. go to a big mall, there's always an X at the entrance and in, yeah. in a map and it says you are here. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the reason people buy Dippin' Dots at the mall is they forgot why they came. <laughs> <laughs> To the mall to buy them. They cost more than drugs. But, but there are people that got distracted. They forgot why they came. And so what if you guys could continue to remember why you picked each other, what you wanted this big adventure to be together? And so what I'm trying to do is just tease it out. And I'm going to have 10,000 three by five cards in a shoebox uh, right next to my jar. <laughs> like These are 10,000. It's easy to ask questions for a guy who's a lawyer that takes depositions for a living. Yeah. Uh, But to actually disclose what's going on, this is how I feel. Uh, This is what was embarrassing for me. Or this is a time where I felt misunderstood. uh, And this is uh, what I did next. Um, And so that the stuff like that is going to be the heart uh, of what keeps it rich. That keeps Marie and I from being roommates. It's uh, it kind of reminds me, um, you said a little bit ago, but we've been, you know, now together more than we ever have. And, and we have a house now up in the mountains, uh, that she's fixing up and that I'm helping with. Um, and we're down here at night. And one of the things that's interesting after spending this many hours together now is like, we have to stay curious about each other. Um, and it's, it gets easy to just kind of like go through the motions now that I'm, I know I'm going to see her tomorrow, right? I don't have a limited amount of time with her, two or three days, and we're going to go and do fireworks and all these great things. It's like, no, she's going to be here on a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday. Um, do you have any advice for us on what it looks like to continue to be curious, uh, especially for two people that are just engaged? We haven't spent 30 years together. Yes, maybe just come armed with like really interesting things. Did you know children are born without kneecaps? Is that crazy? <laughs> they come later. But like, I, that's just mind blown. Oh, maybe ask yourself, what are the myths that you've believed? Some people believe you never go to a grocery store when, finish the sentence. You're hungry. When you're hungry, what a stupid idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're hungry, <laughs> they're full of food. Go do something about it. Uh, some people believe that you can't jump in a pool for 30 minutes after you eat. No, or that you lose most of your heat through your head. It's just all made up. It's not true. <laughs> and so what I want us to do is instead of like winning a game of trivial pursuit, what if we became genuinely interested in one another? That I'm curious about, I could tell I missed that 
I meant to connect with you. I missed that. Uh, I'm curious how I could have done that better. What's a, like, I want to be the, the person that has the most experience ever, not just the most logged time, but the person that's the most curious about Sweet Maria Goff, that nobody's ever been more curious about what makes her tick. And for us to do that, rather than just playing 50 questions, we actually have to just say, what's the newest updated version of me? Like a uh, new day, new Ben, new day, new Jess, new day, new Bob. Uh, this idea that we're new creations. So update each other to say, there's this thing stirring inside of me. I know it's crazy, but I'm just going to not travel anymore. Like I told Sweet Marie in January, there's no such thing as like viruses and all that in January. I canceled on a Thursday, which is the thing I, the day I quit stuff. Uh, I canceled 72 speaking events. I just went right down the line. Everyone, I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> Oh. It was awesome. I mean, just said, like, I'm a grandpa now. I'm like, must be present to win. And so while, at the, uh, you know, there's a financial consequence to that because that's what I do. Uh, but it was really beautiful. Remember Cortez? He burned the ships. Wouldn't that be great to always just with your, uh, as a wedding gift to yourself, have two matches uh, on the bal- uh, on the mantle, and this isn't for light and for the fires. It's burning the ships. We are here. We're there. Are no other options for Cortez's men. We're staying put right here. That kind of symbolism in your life would be so beautiful. These would be the stories that you tell your kids and grandkids. What are these two matches about? We decided we would burn down whatever got in between us. We were just mm-hmm. like we are here. Where this is when we say this is a union forever, we the first thing we did, we just said we're just letting go of anything else, and we need to burn it down. We got two matches to do that. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah, that is beautiful. Yeah. Now, some people will claim that uh, in order to be in a healthy relationship romantically, you've got to kind of understand yourself first. Um, you know, the first, and I, and I am going to tie into the book here. So I did, you know, this comes out February 2nd, Alone in Plain Sight. Come very, on. It's my very up first up again. That's a big deal. Yeah. People think like this just emerges like you made a clay pot. Like, <laughs> that is a lot of tedious work. Well done. It is, man. And Come on. I, I would like to say, you know, as we're here too, like a lot of the stuff in here is taken from, I mean, if you look on the bookshelf right beside me, like from your work and your life and your stories um, kind of reading through those and the tough times and also kind of gathering and processing thoughts. Now um, the very first chapter or section of this book talks about connecting with self. And my claim is that in order to connect with yourself, you've got to kind of eliminate the labels and the shame and the guilt that's been placed on you by life. Uh, You're not just a doctor. You're not just a lawyer. uh, uh, You are something so much greater, so much more special. And I heard you, I think it was actually last time I talked to you, you had told me that the magic to connecting with self or the magic to life is living in whimsy. Uh, yes. You used you use the word whimsy and I, I still have that in my phone is live in whimsy. So to get to the point here, I want to ask you, um, what does it mean for you to connect with yourself? Like, what does that look like? Do you even believe that that's an important pursuit? Yeah. First of all, like you kind of need to know where you are so you can figure out where you're headed, right? Because if you don't have any sense of where you are in the mall, Mm -hmm. you won't know how to navigate to get there. So a little bit of introspection is a really good thing to do. And sometimes having a person along, I'm not saying like a guide that got uh, to be a popular concept. Um, Think about a Sherpa. If you want to climb a big mountain, the Sherpa doesn't tell you which one to climb. He just says what you don't need to take with you to get there. (laughs) It goes in your backpack. It says you actually don't need that shame. You don't need the nine rolls of socks. You don't need all this stuff. So, And then the Sherpa helps you break trail. It helps you go up your mountain a little bit faster. And so I would say find a couple Sherpas in your life, maybe another couple that the two of you are tracking with, maybe uh, men and women in your life that are inspiring to you, that they tend to speak truth, uh, that they uh, tend to be pretty predictable, and that most of all, they're safe. They're just safe. They just uh, they don't have an agenda because when love has an agenda, it didn't love anymore. It's a program. And I don't want to be part of somebody's program. I just want to be 
loved and accepted. And so what I would say uh, to your point about uh, offloading some shame and all that, just figure it out. Like what's the, uh, the story that you made up to explain your life? So for instance, uh, I deal with a fear of rejection. Is that crazy? Like the happy guy? But like, whatever, like, yeah, I just, uh, I I can go back to little eight-year-old Bobby Goff and uh, a thing didn't make me a victim, just made me a participant where I felt a whole heap of rejection. And so uh, at eight years old, you don't have the tools to deal with that. So what you do is you make up a story. And so the story I made up is that everybody will eventually leave. Is that crazy? And then you make up rules to support the story you made up to explain the thing you couldn't, didn't have the tools to explain. And so the rule for a long time in my life was don't go deep with anybody because if they don't really know who I am and they reject me as the story goes, everyone will. If they don't know me and they reject me, it would hurt less than if I really disclosed who I was and they rejected me, that would be like, Oh my gosh, they knew everything and they said, no thanks. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to go back to the little chalk outline of, uh, of us growing up. What was that thing that incited the pain or the, the shame or the whatever? So that kind of that journey of some self-understanding, I'm not saying you need to camp out there, uh, but I'm saying like, understand it, see it. So then you can fix it. The, uh, the inter- it's interesting. I, 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 the whole book starts with a story uh, where I was in uh, uh, the first grade and I went to reading class. Uh, you know, in reading class, we did partner reading. And there was one day, I'm an only child, there was one day I wasn't chosen by anybody to be their partner. And that still, that story created at like seven still sticks with me today at 31 uh, deeply. Isn't that crazy? It's a moment. And it's not that we're obsessing over it. We were just, it was kind of like we were looking for anything that would float. You know, it was just Rose on Titanic climbing on top of the door. (laughs) She told Jack never let go and then she let go of him. But (laughs) but I would say uh, to find something that actually uh, brings you back to that place of introspection and with some safe people that can help you find your way out. There's a, uh, there's a great um, uh, series of five poems uh, and they get shorter each time. The first one says, I'm walking on the sidewalk. There's a big hole. I fell in it. It's somebody else's fault. It takes me forever to get out. That's the first one. The second one, I'm walking on the sidewalk. There's a big hole. I fall in it. I, I, I don't think it's my fault, but I figured out how to get out of it. The third one is I'm walking down the sidewalk. I fell in, but it's a habit. There's this like awareness that like I immediately get out of it. The fourth story is I'm walking down the sidewalk. I see the hole. I go around it. And the fifth one, I'm walking down the sidewalk and it decided to take another street. (laughs) So that awareness that grows each time from saying it's somebody else's fault, in other words, I'm the victim, to I'm a participant, I can own it, this is a habit, to saying I'm gonna take another street. That's what's gonna happen with our best relationships. Uh, I'm just so glad you started out with that chapter in the book. Yeah. uh, There's a part, uh, there's actually a section, part chapter called Victim or uh, Victor, and I get to talk to one of my buddies who uh, is a little bit younger than me, maybe 28. Um, he was a college athlete, and he came out here and moved out here uh, last year with his fiance, and he was skiing up in the Colorado Mountains, and he hit a post, and he's paralyzed oh, um, from the chest down now. Uh, and that whole chapter is about exactly what you're saying, is he chose, uh, even in the, I mean, this story is so hard to process, right? Like, so hard to understand. But he tells me in the book, like, I chose not to be a victim of this. I chose to be a participant. This was a part of my story. uh, And I am going to continue my life because I still have breath to live. It's an incredible part of the interview that I get to do with him. Um, But all this kind of wraps around now to sitting back here uh, because the third section of the book is about romance. uh, And it's about connecting not only – and this is a part I'm really interested in. I know Jessica is as well. We have a lot of friends right now who are single. Uh, right. We're lucky enough to have found each other. I I got very lucky in that. Uh, but we have some friends that are single and they're looking, but they just feel like they're not 
connecting. Like they just feel like they're not finding their match. Um, and I'd love to sit here um, with all of us here for a second and talk about singleness. Like when you hear of somebody single, let's say they're in uh, their mid thirties, mid forties, more mid fifties, and they're still looking for their partner, maybe mid twenties. Um, what would you tell them? Yeah, I would think that two things uh, to delight in this time. Like what is it that is possible now that won't be possible later? So to travel, to like, you know, take cuts in the ski lift, like like (laughs) all kinds of things, like what is a a possibility? Um, So uh, there's a number of things that like spring to mind that you might be able to do now that you wouldn't have the ability to do without a lot of consensus building later. And so I would just say like, let's do this. And I'd also have your head on a swivel, not just for romance, but for all of the things that are around you. Mm. Like if your head on the swivel, you want to see more waterfalls, travel with people that look for waterfalls. Like you're just going to find, cause they'll say like over there, over there. Like I'm not a bird watcher guy. I'm a little too Enneagram seven for that. Mm. But it, I've found out a lot about the birds around me because there's somebody I know that is, and they're like, that's a uh, whatever. And uh, I just think that's fascinating. Now, is that my jam? No, but uh, my head's on a swivel constantly to think of that. If you're looking for romance though, I would say find people that know what love is. Because like, there's a lot of people that just don't know what it is. I remember, I think you and I talked about that once, that when my daughter was uh, in high school, I told her all these guys would ask you out to the prom. Yeah. So ask them what love is. And, uh, and uh, love is sacrifice and commitment. It's not butterflies. It's, a, it's sacrifice and commitment. And so the two of you are going to go the distance because you know what love is. And so it's that sacrificial love that there's some things that, I had on my agenda that were desires of mine that I'm actually going to need to move down a couple notches. Commitment to say, I'm not just going to love you if I'm feeling it and all the rainbows and sunshine. I'm just committed. I'm in. Mm -hmm. It's not you and then whatever other distraction. It's like, I will burn those ships. I got two matches. (laughs) There's something beautiful about that. And it's finding a way forward when it's really dark, because it's really easy when you guys, remember the first time you guys touched knees? Remember, like, can you think back about when that was? Jessica, did that come to mind? Like well, when you were a fan? first time we ever, like, even touched each other, he just kissed me, so. There's a oh, backstory to that, yeah. there's a backstory. <laughs> Tell him the backstory. Well, we had been FaceTiming for three weeks. We met, he messaged me on Instagram, is how we met. And so we'd only been FaceTiming for three weeks, and then I flew out to, Denver to finally meet him and I had like a joke prepared for when I saw him and I was ready I was geared up it was gonna it was really gonna be a good one but when I saw him he just ran up and kissed me so it wasn't I didn't wow I know so romantic right yes it totally is maybe um when you have uh the this uh display of affection for each other to just uh, like be affectionate with each other be playful. Like uh, 34 years into this adventure with Sweet Maria, I sing to her every single day. I sing another song about her life and how she impacts the world. This is 34 years of this bad songs. <laughs> but even though she rolls her eyes every time, I think when I'm in the jar, she's going to be thinking, you know what I really miss is a song about me. Yeah. <laughs> What there was one uh, one event that would not let me cancel. I had 74, 72 let me cancel. Uh, there was one in Arizona. <clears throat> and so I was a little creeped out about flying at the time with like what was in the air. So I thought like, I'm a private pilot, like I could rent a crummy plane. And so I rented indeed a crummy plane. There's like duct tape on it. And I flew over to Phoenix. <clears throat> and on the way back, over the desert where there's no lights to give you orientation to the instruments dropped out. This is like three weeks ago. They just dropped out. There's no horizon. There's no lights. No, there's no, no. That's what it feels like sometimes in a relationship when you have just missed out. You've just missed each other. You got no bearings. You, you don't have the tools you need to go where you need to go. But one of the things that worked is the thing that tells you if the wings are level. And so what I did is I leveled the wings and I climbed because there's a mountain range between Phoenix and San Diego. So for the next hour and a half, I just climbed. 
I just got more altitude on it until I could see the glow of San Diego. And I just aim for that. Here's the deal. If you don't know in your relationship what to do, level the wings, get some altitude on it. To just say, like, I just need a new perspective on this one that I can't access. And then feel free to say to the one that you love, the only words I can access right now are the wrong ones. Um, mm -hmm. If you could just give me till 10 a.m. tomorrow, I'm going to search for some better words that are more accurate, more loving than the ones I can get at right now. Does that make sense? It does. I also want to know how you found the airport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the, uh, there's a little green swirly thing. <laughs> you can see the highways once you get there. <laughs> uh, it does make sense. It, yeah. it really does. And um, we're learning all this, right? We're, I, I said, you know, it's funny you use a plane analogy. I often say in life when I'm trying to learn something new that I feel like I'm flying the plane and building it at the same time. Uh, yes. that, you know, that I'm patching it while I'm also like, going up and down and hopefully at some point it feels more like soaring and for sweet marie and i just at a really practical level it was like amateur night like when we got married and be like <laughs> in ice like a little <laughs> we went to our honeymoon i was like you know it wouldn't probably be for want of desire just like nobody had ever wanted to go out on a date with me and uh and so uh we got to our honeymoon night i've been like girl i've been waiting for 26 years and you know who showed up 50 hari krishnas Outside with the ding, da, da, ding, da, da, ding, da, da, ding, oh, right yeah. outside our door. I was like, oh, what a buzzkill. <laughs> but, but there's something that actually is kind of funny. The things that like we have in our mind that everything is going to unfold one way. And then when it actually unfolds later, at the moment, it was a little disturbing, like the whole, like, I got a place for your symbols. But, <laughs> but on reflection, it actually, I haven't thought about that in 34 years, but on reflection, <laughs> it's kind of endearing. It's super it's special. Awesome. Well, hey, um, again, thank you for everything yeah. that you've done from a distance and everything you've done for me. And this is, I think, the second time we've been able to talk. Uh, since even the book kind of got announced, and uh, this is a big deal to up to both of us because it, it talks is. about it a lot. Um, I do have one final question for you, and uh, and we are kind of sticking with the romance theme because uh, we have admired your relationship uh, with Sweet Maria. Uh, how did you know she was the one? Yeah, it wasn't like I had a, a you know ladybug land on my nose. I think if God wanted my attention, he'd drop a piano on me. Um, <laughs> But what I did is I said, what is everything I know about me? And I'm, am I constantly curious about her? Is there just this insatiable appetite for knowing more about her and then drawing closer? And, um, and it brought out more authenticity in me. I wanted to be known. I was willing to displace mm -hmm. some of those stories that I told about like guarding my heart by night, like not going deep with anybody. Like, so I can be a super fun guy. But sometimes super fun guys are super shallow. Um, and I found somebody that just really wanted to, from the deepest part, to be known and to know her. So it wasn't just a need to be known. It was like a desire to be known. So whether you're uh, somebody listening and you're dating or you're in a marriage, uh, the, or this isn't a plug for your book, Ben, but it's a plug for the book. Get some input. Mm -hmm. Find, surround yourself with some Sherpas that are going to say, you don't need that shame. And to go, so these are some stories about things that have happened in a friend in an accident. So as we get another camera angle on our, our relationships, our life, that's the power of reading. And, and I'm just so glad you did the work to get it out there. And I'm telling you, I will read your book in the hopes, not cause, just because I like you guys, uh, but I'm going to read it because I want to grow uh, into a better husband for Sweet Maria. And I believe that you're a voice I can trust and that's going to get me there. So I'm in. Man, thank you. Um, let me know what you think when you read it, please. Yeah. Oh, Here's yeah. Are you kidding me? To, uh, fun. Yeah, to hear. To two matches. Ten months till this wedding. I, I know if a doctor told me I only had a year to live, I'd spend it engaged. It'll be the longest year of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, a really funny story. Here's a funny story that, that is a little awkward, but it's super public at this point. Um, so we have chosen to stay abstinent till marriage. Like we chose that as a couple. Um, that is a decision that got released. Uh, we made that decision early on in our relationship because we believed it was something uh, that we wanted to do and it was best for us. 
uh, not knowing that a pandemic would hit and put our wedding back another 12 months. So we feel you. We get it. <laughs> We're like, are you kidding me? I can just see the angels in heaven, like elbowing each other, saying like, <laughs> this is awesome. I'm sending 20 Hare Krishnas over. So you can have the same experience that I did. Ding, ding, ding. Maybe I'll just show up with some symbols. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, well, hey, again, uh, everybody out there watching, Alone in Plain Sight comes out February 2nd. Um, Bob, you're the best. Please, everybody watching, go out and check out Bob's stuff. You're just an incredible human. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for sharing your breath with us and time with us tonight. We appreciate you more than you probably realize. Oh, man. It's this worldwide family, friends. Everybody listening is part of it. And I think all together, we make one well-adjusted person. <laughs> but it's just going to take all of us yeah. doing our part. <laughs> well, hey, have a great evening. Thank you again. You're the best. So long.